Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode, a uh, second episode of Dark Works. And I'm Rena Wells, I am your medicine woman and highly intuitive, and I'm here to just talk a lot about black magic. And if you haven't listened to episode number one, I will link it down below. Please go listen to that so you can understand my background and why I have the experience of working in dense energies and what I have seen my whole life, what you need to know about me. I did not have an awakening. I've been awakened this entire incarnation and why I am so attuned to energy, the details, how it ebbs and flows intricately. And I'm able to see the perfect alignment of creation. And so that's just a little bit about me. And so if you want to know more, I'd have I highly suggest going and listening to that. Now, I'm going to talk about, in episode two, about the basics in regards to how dark energies trick you, how they psychologically siphon you, your psychic abilities, and through your empathic abilities. We see a lot in the psychological community, in the, and I have dealt a lot with psychiatry as well. Because of my own trauma and my own abuses, I spent many years in the mental health field just healing myself. So I'm a true wounded healer. I've been healing for close to 30 years now. I'm done my healing. Uh, there does come a point when you're integrating and creating your mission and you're completed your healing. I'm more an integration point. And so what I talk about mental disorders and things like that, those are just coping skills that highly sensitive people use. And in our world, the field of psychiatry still doesn't know exactly what they're doing with the brain. I've studied a lot with uh, professionals. I've worked with them just basically on myself. And I've, I research everything. <laughs> I'm, I have high academia as well. So I like to read. I like to research. I like facts as well. So I'm not just a mystic. I also play on the other realms as well, too. So this episode is going to talk about how dark forces attach to you and why we call that the narcissist and empath paradigm. It's a very well-known term. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but it's basically how our world has been created and the system that we've been living in and for the last 150 years has really been separation, divide and conquer, which has been happening over 500 years, but really in the last 150 years in the industrial revolution era, era it's really been about separation and fending for yourselves. And if we can divide any kingdom or we can divide any community and we can psychologically shift them, change them into survival mode, then we've accomplished feeding the ego. And this is how dark energies attach to you. They psychically get in by first playing with the lower vibrations. And so I'm sure you guys have recognized that when you feel someone watching you, if you've walked into a haunted house, or even if you've walked into a room and people have been fighting and you know that there has been tense energy in a certain area, you can feel that. We are all born empathic. We all have this gift of empathy because it was the way that we communicated with our mothers. When we first came out of the womb, we did not have words. We had our telepathy, our empathic abilities, and our natural abilities given to us by source. And every animal has this. We just instinctually know how to survive. We just instinctually know what we need to do to move towards the breast of your mother, to feed, to need love and touch and caress. Those are just natural things. But in our world of conquer and divide and separation, we have come to a place of just owning that for ourselves. And empaths, especially if you're listening to this, we feel deeper mainly because either the trauma that we experienced or the experiences in our life and the sensitivity that we have push us deeper into ourselves. But also the ego feeds on sensitivity as well, too. That's also another aspect of fragility. And fragility is where we can't handle anything negative or dark. And I'm bringing this up because this is how darker forces play on us. This is 
how darker forces seep in is that they have the ability to scan your auric field. And this is why I, when I help people, like I, I'm going to talk about spell work and black magic and all of those things. And, but I want to fill in the basics first of, of basically how the dark entities feed into you and yeah, thank you. And that's how spirit is leading me. So let's just jump back into that and see where spirit takes us on this. So your auric field, based on your lineage, you were born clear. And that's why when babies come, they're pure, they're innocent. Every child is born completely pure. And I know that can be a hard concept for some and saying, you know, well, Hitler wasn't born pure of soul. And I challenge you on that. I challenge you to go back to when his mother gave birth to him and held him in his arms and looked at him. And, you know, <laughs> we wouldn't throw that baby out and say, oh, my God, let's kill this child. Let's sacrifice this child because it's going to be Hitler. He's going to do horrible things. Things happen in our world. We get siphoned. And based on the lineage that we come into, there are different things, different incidents, different cause and effects that cause holes in your auric field. Even, and, and I'm going to say the lineage is probably the biggest aspect, to be honest, of what creates the holes in your auric field, because generationally, every generation wants to improve and get better. And even if it's just a slight difference, a lot of us still get stuck in family patterns, addictions, the way that we we're brought up. We believe that because we experience that, that is how we are to live. That is how the world is. Our perception is very skewed. Even if you grew up in a fairly, you know, loving family, we still get skewed that way because we then fail to see other aspects uh, around us of people that also do suffer and not to say that you don't have empathy for those people but we we have a limited perception based on if we're raised in a traumatic environment or not a traumatic environment whatever it is the perceptions are what mold us and in order to break out of any type of container that's going to take the opposite effect and so for instance if you were born in trauma you either become a repeater of that trauma or you become a victim of that trauma. And when true love comes to you, it's very difficult for you to accept that because that feels completely foreign to you. And vice versa, if you grew up in a fairly stable, healthy home, it's very difficult to empathize or to uh, see trauma or see the, the, the darkness in that way and we become more privileged in that sense and more fragile to the ego because of the sensitivity of good and peace and love. And that's more of our experience. But again, we're going to need the contrast, the dark, to elevate us out of that container. And so everything is about breaking that container. And so dark energies can be used, are here for a reason, as a contrast. Now. If you're listening to this and you are involved with people that do black magic on you or to your twin flame or just siphon you and you see them and you feel them, this is where I work with my clients and how to become empowered in yourself because I'm not one to play into necessarily working with deities and things like that. I work with the creator and to gain your power with the creator and to become a warrior of the light. That's really what I'm here to do to help people. And it's not that it's wrong to speak to deities and it's not wrong to do spell work. I do white magic as well. It's just different. And I'm going to get into that into another episode. But what we're going to talk about is like the aspects and how dark energy is attached to you. And so your lineage is very important. It's one of the main factors in how you have holes in your etheric shield based on how you grew up. 
And dark energies have shown me how they get into people. You can put massive amounts of protection around yourself. You can do spell work if you wish. Spell work only affects you if you haven't healed. And this is why I work with people and do plant medicine ceremonies and things like that. Because healing is the core of sealing yourself up. Authenticity is another aspect of sealing yourself up. That means you have to be super authentic with your expression, with your knowing, with your truth and how you speak to people. And because we like to play different roles in our life and dark energies like that, you know, if you go to work, you have to act a certain way. And then I never understood that, you know, we go to work, we act one way and we come home, we act another way. We go with one friend, we act one way and then we act different with our parents. Like, I don't understand, I never understood that, but I think that's just been my path because of what I'm here to help you guys with is we have to be authentic across the board and just express it across the board. Now, the words and what you need to convey at work is obviously going to be different than what you convey to your grandmother, but your authenticity, the core of where that expression comes from, it's not from the mind, it's from your gut, right? From your intuition. And that authenticity and how you, in your intention, in that authenticity and how you express and convey words, that energy behind it is from a deep, deep place of raw honesty. When you do that is how you stand up to darker forces because darker forces are all about lies. They're all about illusion. They're all about pulling the shade over your eyes. And unfortunately, we live in a world of darkness. There is a a light grid work that the creator originally created when the earth was created, the Garden of Eden, the Golden City, El Dorado, whatever you want to call it. There's so many names for it. The Paradise, the City of Gold. I love that movie. (laughs) But um, there's a light grid work that's the original purity of God and manifested on the earth. And it's here. It's here, you guys. Heaven is on earth. It's here. And then that's why we go to nature and the mother of the mother is the womb of of who we are because spirit and the creator is mother and father energies, right? It's the balance of masculine and feminine. So that light grid work is here, but over the fall of consciousness of man. There has been eons and eons and eons of dark energies that have come here, that have been brought here, that have been created also partly by illusion of mass consciousness of what humanity has created. But there's also other entities that have come from other space places, other places, and that have manifested here. And there is a cloud of another dark grid work that's over the original light grid work. And to get into that light grid work means that you came into a lineage to heal, to stop the patterns. Like It stops with you. That's how powerful you are. Things that weren't met in your childhood, the abandonment issues or whatever that you went through, we had to face a certain aspect of duality. All of us, by the time we hit two years old, we form a personality. That is the forming of the mind and the psyche where the personality splits into dualistic right or wrong uh, cause and effect right back and forth up and down and because of that split that is where a lot of our dna gets activated and the dark codes that have been activated in that lineage are going to create the holes in your etheric shield of where the dark forces come in through attachment now dark forces They come in through the lower vibrational emotions, like I was saying, that then trigger psychological triggers. That's why, you know, you'll say you, you know, my, my, my family would be like, you got a passion, tricky temper, like your mother, or you have this, like your father, you know, it's, it's because there are dark attachments to the family lineage. Humanity are slaves to the dark forces. We have fallen so deep in consciousness that there isn't one, I mean, unless you're really living in in the rainforest and you've never met another human outside of the rainforest and you don't live in, in you know, you're not part of the system. It's very rare. Uh, You're going to be 
siphoned by darker forces. And that's because as a collective, we've done that with our lineages. And if we haven't healed that, we're going to continuously repeat patterns and we're going to not be able to break the ceiling of abundance that our family currently resides in. We may improve it a little bit, but we may hit a point and you'll notice like I'm still stuck here. Like why is this loop still happening? It's because it's ancestral darkness that you we have been siphoned and darker forces feed off everybody. I have done ayahuasca where I've seen I see demons walking around like walking around attached to people, you know? It's like um it's very interesting. So unless you know, you're not willing to do your shadow work. Uh, it's and not a lot of people aren't aren't ready to do that. You know, it's hard. This is not easy work. I'm going to be honest. This is if you're listening to this, you're really ready to step into a warrior spirit to know Christ energy, Buddha energy, because all the ascended masters face darkness before, you know, they had to face the demons dead on because that's how we are living on this planet. Nothing on our planet is in alignment to God's truth, to the creator's truth. Our money, for one, is a man-made concept, you know, but we it's a reality we live in and we need to work in that. The buildings and the cities we live in, that's not to God's plan, you know. If anything that reaps from the mother, that takes from the mother and creates the mother earth, our our true mother, to be out of balance, it's because something is being siphoned, uh, there's a darker force that is reaping the life force of Mother Earth through enslaving humans and through our lineage. So basically, how they get you, right? Codependency, Buddha says, attachment, right? Anything that you are attached to, exterior of yourself will create suffering. And the moment that you feel the lower vibrations, it's not that you can't feel them and you can't express them. But if we continuously remain in that place and not take active action to heal those things within us, the darker forces are, are part of re-triggering your traumas, coming back in and scratching that wound that you just healed. And you think it's you, right? We have to be aware that they're, we're walking around in shadows here already and you can't rise and ascend you know if you were going to ascend and rise it means you had to have fallen at some point and so when you came here and you were born you were born pure soul pure baby pure beautiful creation of the creator this bright light but because of the lineage and that gets activated by the time you're two we are constantly falling from the time that we're born even deeper into the darkness so yeah, I should have put a trigger warning at the beginning of the, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> um, cause I don't want to depress you guys, but sometimes we need to know what's happening so that we can know how to work in energy properly. Because if we haven't healed, your channel is only as good as how much you've healed. Your, your connection to creator is only as clear and precise as to how much you have faced these dark things and sealed yourself up. So we have to look at attachments and I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story from, from the first episode. I talked about the tarot cards, but I didn't talk about how they returned to me 22 years ago. I was attached and, and again, you're gonna to have to go listen to that episode one if uh, you want to know the story. But basically you guys know, I took the tarot cards with me. They had an attachment to them and I, I basically had almost, you know, I was in a deep spiritual warfare, these dark energies trying to, to overtake me. and. 22 years later, okay, practicing, I've been working in this for a while. I had a dear friend of mine who said she wanted a tarot deck. So we decided we didn't want to stay in the town that we were in. We took a little road trip. We went out to a cool little out country new age shop. You know, uh, we were led there. We went by our intuition. We got there. And in the store, my friend runs up to me with this tarot deck that was wrapped in the same cloth that I had thrown it out in. <laughs> and she brought it to me. She's like, I love this. I'm going to get this deck. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like my old deck from like 22 years ago. 
didn't have a box. It was a used deck. They didn't know where it came from. So anyways, oh my God, so crazy. And we brought it back to my house. And now if you listen to the first episode, I identified with the Empress in that card. And we got back to my house and I flipped over the deck and it was that card staring at me. And I was like, are you kidding me? Anyways, my friend took it. I showed her how to use it a little bit. She took it. She came back to me a week later and she's like, do you want the deck? I don't want it. And I'm like, why? And she's like, there's something wrong with it. I don't like it. And that was that trickster energy, right? That, and this is how energies through attachment, right? They try to trick you. It makes you feel good. They use Zaza Zing. They use things that you're usually attracted to, things in your ego that you had already developed or that your lineage had developed of, you know, um, what you find hot, sexy, what you, uh, even your health, even what you eat, even the people that you hang out with, even the, your earning potential, all of those things, your belief systems, whatever you're attached to in your physical 3D world is how dark energies play. And so if you have an attachment, it can play in those attachments and that codependency. We have to realize that we're also addicted. We're, we're natural addicts, okay? Our bodies, our spacesuit, our earth suit, I should say, not our spacesuit, but our earth suit are all chemical responses. You know, you get a feeling based on a chemical response and lower vibrational feelings are based on a chemical response, either by dopamine, serotonin, when you want to feel good, are also based on a chemical response. And love and chemical love is very much based on a 3D basis in regards to what you've known or what you've been conditioned in the ego, in the mind. And so dark forces will come in and psychologically siphon you that way by triggering lower emotions and even triggering your ego emotions, right? And we can see that a lot in relationships. Like, oh my God, this person's sexy. It's hot. It's, ooh, the sex is so good. Uh, you get pulled in by these physical stimulus because that's the physical chemical reactions of the physical body. So when we play in those things, and I see a lot of people, and I mean, that's how we, that's how we are as a whole collective. That's how humanity is, right? So I'm not going to blame the new age community or anything like that. But I also know that when we try to cut cords or we do all of these new agey things and putting protection around us, those are based, it, not that visualization is a bad thing or it, it, it can be a very powerful tool. So like, I, like I always believe there's, two sides to every coin. There's a dark and a light to everything. And then there's God's truth. So I'm not saying that it's bad, but depending on where you're at and how you're using these tools, right, is going to depend on your attachment to it and how authentic you are in knowing your power. And if you don't have a lot of power and you're not feeling and you're feeling really defeated, you know, that's a hard place. I understand that. That's a hard place to be in is that that protection and that visualization of putting protection does feel good, right? But we can also, we are such habitual creatures, right? Humans are so habitual. It's like, oh, but this protection feels good, so I'm just going to do it again. And we become attached. And so whenever we form that kind of attachment, darker forces can seep in and siphon your channel. And you may be thinking you're putting protection around yourself, and you may be thinking you're working with an angel, but in fact you're not. And I don't want to say this, that this for you guys to be scared, okay? Because you got to realize you're here for a reason. Every experience that you have is perfect, even if it's a dark experience, because nothing can happen to you unless creator allows it to happen to you, the natural flow of energy and how we create balance in the universe. And you are only given what you can handle. So even if it's dark and it's dense and it feels like, oh my God, I don't know how the hell I'm even like dealing with this. Like, uh, why is this for me? You know, and this is why it's like, oh, listen to number episode one, because I mean, I was given poltergeist activity from day one to deal with. And I'm like, seriously, like, how is this my life? Why is this my life? I don't want to do this. Um, <laughs> God gives you truly what you can handle. And it, it pushes you, the darkness pushes you to really stand in that light. And so 
yes, demons are scary. Yes, dark entities are scary. And yes, people lose the battle. I, I've seen many that are completely housed. A lot of these karmic situations, uh, they're reaping their karma in this life, especially in the twin flame journey, because of the the selfishness that they've had in other lifetimes. And they can't evolve in this life because they have to really work on that karma to become humble. You can't work in bright divinity of God's light until you are really humble to that power. It's such a pure love. And a lot of people want to misuse that power. You know, they want that so badly. But to get to that point, it it's not easy to get to that point. You got to humble yourself all the time. You have to be deep in prayer. You got to face some really dark things. Because remember, if everything is the contrast, like I said at the beginning, to break your, the container of your perspective and what you know and that belief system, you're going to need the complete opposite energy. And so if you want to know the purity of God's love, you're going to have to know the exact opposite of that evil. There's a double-sided coin, right? And so to claim your light, you have to come face to face at one point to a certain frequency of darkness for your souls of to for your soul to evolve to. And not everybody is going to have the same experience, right? That's going to be different for everybody. But when darker forces come into attach, the first thing is here are some here are some things that you can start doing to realize if things are siphoning you. First of all, if you've known that you've been healing a pattern and it's you feel good and then it gets re-triggered and that's happened at least three times, then you know that something is siphoning you. Okay. That's one. If all of a sudden you're feeling completely fine and then you fall to the ground and you just cry and you're feeling desperation or trauma or like, I don't even want to say trauma or like um sadness or depression or even anger and you are fine, but then it just hits you. You are being siphoned by something. Okay. If, for instance, you are really trying to heal in your, in your life and you're, and you've been working really hard on that. And things are still manifesting um, in your world that's that's dark or catastrophe or you get into a car accident or something happens like, uh, you know, I don't know, you're late for work and I don't know, I keep saying like you get into a car crash or something or you lose your job the next day and you've been really on this good flow and you think that, oh my God, I'm hitting a new vibration, something good. And then, you know, something bad happens. And sometimes those things happens in threes again, it may not happen in threes, but if you notice that you are being siphoned. So that little piece of discernment I'm going to give you guys in this episode is to just become aware because if you can bring, it's such a small shift too, I'm going to be honest, that shift between light and dark, it's like, it's so minute that we in the mind can just play it off and be like, oh, okay, I just got to keep going and healing that or uh, that didn't work. And, you know, maybe it's me. What the hell's wrong with me? And we beat ourselves up. But if we can take it from another perspective and be like, no, wait a minute. You know what? I've been healing this. This isn't me. And that's how you got to become really, really authentic with yourself. You have to know your truth inside and out without giving, um, without knowing who you are based on other people's judgments on you without being attached to other other people's opinions about you. To know, also, Spirit is saying, your relationship with Creator is very important, okay? Because we are only the expression of God. We are not God. That's the big misconception in the New Age community as well. We're God. I'm God. We're all gods. No, you're not. You're the expression. You are to, here to express a piece of God consciousness and then to attract other soul tribe members that have that same frequency so that you as a collective can experience a greater frequency of God consciousness manifested in your physical reality. And it's about community. It's not about you are the God. That creates another form of separation. See, we are not here to be in separation, divide and conquer. We're here for unity. That's what this next what Christ what Christ consciousness really is about too. It's about unity and community and holding everyone holds their little percentage of what they can bring through with with God energy and creator energy, ground that into the mother and to be honoring in the mother and nature. 
our tribe will show up and then we create a bigger, vast movement of potency in the expression of God. Because we're all God together. And, and we have to come to that realization. And when we get to that point, right, when we start to realize, okay, I'm being siphoned here. I need to get more authentic with myself. I, I need to really look at myself here in this situation. I need to look at where I'm attaching. Am I attaching to my twin? Am I, you know, just too obsessed with what's going on over there? Maybe I need to pull my energy back and be into me. Get a, get right with my relationship with, with my creator. Get right with my soul. Uh, you know, there are times I've, I've been celibate too. I, I'll be honest. I, I enjoy intimacy. <laughs> uh, and I played in that quite a bit. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've even done burlesque. I've, uh, yeah, I enjoy having that sexiness about me. But there came a point in my life where I had to really hold myself back because I was also being siphoned by those other types of lust demons, you know? And that triggers the psyche too, right? Attaches to family patterns, abuse patterns, all of those different things that, um, and, and if you keep playing in those things over and over and over again, is that people get siphoned because they're so attached to that way of being. And when they become so attached to that way of being, you give your power away. You give that piece of your light away for the attachment. And that gives permission because you have to give permission to the darkness to come in. But they do it in a very, you know, shady, manipulative way because that's what darkness does. And they come in through those etheric shields that you, holes that you haven't healed in your, in your lineage, right? And so... Yeah, so th that's why I'm saying the attachments is the first thing of codependency. Because when those tarot cards came back to me, and I'll tell you that, uh, when my friend gave them back to me, uh, they did try to attach to me again. Like they, they, I felt the, when I took them from her and I started using them again, I was like, oh, this is fine. I'm, I'm trained in this now. I can do this. Um, I felt it shift ever so slightly. And I had to, I was like, no, 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 forget this. And I went, I burnt them out in the field and I put it in a coffee tin and the whole thing like blew up and the whole like field started to catch on fire. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I had to like get my hose and like, cause it was dry season. I had to, <laughs> anyway, so it's, but that darkness still even came back to me recently, you know, because the vessel it was holding was in the tarot card. So don't burn things that have an entity attached to it. I've learned that guys. That's another thing. Bury it deep because it needs a vessel, right? If you burn it, you're releasing it and it can find you again. So I recently had, it did come back and I recently had to trap it. I've just recently trapped it and I have to bury it. So that's a whole other aspect. I'll, I'll get into the magic aspect soon <laughs> and the black magic and the white magic and spell work and stuff. So yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about this, about this episode. I didn't want to go too long into it. But I wanted to talk about that so that you guys can start to understand how these things can get at you. And if somebody does black magic on you or spell work on you, the moment that you hold lower frequency vibrations, anger, fear, you know, giving that's all giving your power away. The moment that you think someone has power over you, remember your emotions sit inside of you. The fear is sitting inside of you, right? That means that you're bigger than it, right? That means that you can bring your light and awareness to it and tell it to bow to you and that you are a child of the light and you are here to own the light and the darkness is to respect that power because you are a purifying light. And I understand that based on, you know, some of you are dealing with some very dense things that it's because you have, you have to look at the contrast that if these dark things are really coming at you, that must mean you got some pretty powerful light. Honestly, don't get defeated in the darkness attacking you, what they're doing to you. That's because they have fear, right? And they deflect that fear and, and try to get you to feel that fear because it's in you. 
and you can transcend it within yourself. And it must mean that you're pretty damn pure and powerful uh, if they're coming at you. All right. So look at your attachments, look at your authenticity, look at your family lineage. That should be a good place to start. And I would love to hear your comments about this, you guys. Um, I can't wait to do episode three. I'm not sure what that's going to be about yet. I think we'll get into maybe some spell work and maybe I'll talk a little bit more about the spells that I know and how to work in white magic versus dark magic. And if you guys have any other suggestions of what you want to know about in these series, leave a comment down below and uh, I can incorporate it into these into the dark work series. And yeah, I, lo I love your input on this. So it'd be great. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this, my loves. Uh, we'll be seeing you soon. I am still doing readings for June. So if you want to do a reading with me, hit me up with my email down below. I'm sending you so much love. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Bye guys.